Hey everybody, welcome to Always Bored, Never Boring. When my D&D group finally get back together, which the way the world is going will be, I guess, sometime in 2022, we intend to finish our Lost Mine of Fandalva campaign and then we're going to move on to a new campaign. And one of my players intends to be a tabaxi. So for his birthday, um, in a move that is either egotistical or cheap depending on how you look at it I decided I would paint him up a tabaxi of his own so I have here a reaper bones black plastic tabaxi miniature and we're going to paint him up so this miniature um, is pretty nice sculpt but straight out of the box there are a few issues with it first of all he has a bent sword uh, second he is leaning quite far back in his pose and third he doesn't come with a base so before I could start painting him, I had to do a few things. I had to uh, do the hot water treatment, obviously, to straighten out the sword and to straighten out the pose. And if you don't know what the hot water treatment is, um, it's just dousing the miniature with hot water, bending it, reposing it, and then dousing it in cold water to uh, reset the pose. And the other thing I had to do was I had to stick it to a base, and I'm using a 25mm Renedra base here. And uh, this seemed like a really good choice because the miniature obviously has um, quite a high um, integral molded base element on it anyway. So if I'd put it on any other type of base, it would have been standing quite high. So the Renedra base keeps it a little bit lower down. And you can see here how he's now got a straighter pose because I've done the hot water treatment by this point. We're now ready to begin painting. So I have done a Corax white undercoat and we're going to start by painting in the leather brown elements using Army Painter Leather Brown. So this is things like the tunic and his gauntlets. Any items of clothing that I want to be brown. And I'm going to do two thin coats with this to make sure I've got a good solid covering. I don't need to worry at the moment about going over things like the fur and everything else. We'll deal with that later at the end. I'm then going to switch to monster brown and we're going to apply that to other brown areas like the sheath so we've just got a different tone of brown on the miniature. And I'm going to do all of the uh, clothing first and I'll do the fur at the end and for the fur we're going to do sort of like a white leopard white tiger type look because I believe my player is actually planning on having um, a valuable pelt as part of his character. I'm switching to Mephiston Red now and I'm just going to block in the pauldron that the uh, tabaxi has on one shoulder. And this is just because otherwise it's going to be quite a brown miniature and it's just a, a spot of colour, something to uh, brighten it up a little bit. While still giving it a sort of natural leathery armour sort of look. And now I'm switching to Dawnstone and... Dawnstone, I find, is quite a good colour for things like leather straps and belts, so that's what we're going to do with that. We're going to um, fill in all of any thongs, straps, belts, anything that would be like a worn leather item. And then I'm also going to paint the quiver as well. I'm just going to give that a solid coat. The arrows will also be Dawnstone. And then we're switching to Balthazar Gold. And this is quite a coppery gold colour. And I find it quite nice for things like sword hilts. So that's what we're doing with that. We're going to uh, just block in the sword hilt. And then we're switching to Lead Belcher for any metal elements. And there really isn't a lot of metal on this miniature at all. It's mainly the sword. But there is also a belt buckle and a couple of buttons on the front of the tunic. So all of that will get a coat of lead belcher. Which is kind of my go-to metallic colour really. I do like lead belcher. And then of course we're switching to Agrax Earthshade because it wouldn't be one of my painting guides without a bit of Agrax. So everything we've painted so far is going to get a coat of Agrax. And that's going to bring out the definition in the miniature and it's also going to tie together the various colours. With that done we're going back to leather brown and we're going to... Um, add some colour back to the raised areas of the miniature just to brighten it up again and to uh, provide more contrast and definition. So a bit of edge highlighting and all of the raised areas. And then we're going to do the same with Monster Brown as well. Just picking out those top areas. 
and anything where the light would hit more. Just being a little bit careful, of course, not to go over things uh, that we don't want to do or ruining any of the definition. I'm also putting the uh, brown around the edge of the pauldron. And then we're going to do the same thing with Dawnstone. We're going to go back to those uh, leather areas like the belt and the straps and we're just going to pick those back out again just so they don't get lost in the muddiness of the browns. We do want them to stand out. And I'm doing the quiver as well and I've thinned the paint down quite a lot here and I'm going to do a couple of layers of this gradually uh, building up the colour towards the bottom of the quiver and just blending it into the dark colour at the top and making sure the edges have got a bit of a highlight on them. And then I'm switching to Evil Sun Scarlet, and this is obviously for that red pauldron. And the pauldron actually has small squares on it, so I'm just very carefully picking out the top of each of those individual squares. Just to brighten them up. Stormhost Silver next, and this is obviously for the top edge of the sword. I'm going to do an edge highlight down the sword, and I'm also going to bring that highlight down a little bit onto the top of the flat of the blade on each side. just to brighten that sword up. We're now going to move on to that fur and we're starting with Ulthuan Grey and like I say we're trying to do a sort of um, white tiger, white leopard sort of a appearance here. So one coat of Ulthuan Grey is enough um, because any colours that sort of show through will just add to the patchiness of the fur. And then we're going to water down some Reichland Flesh Shade and we're going to put a coat of that over the whole thing. We're thinning it down a little bit because we do want to bring out the definition in the fur, but we don't want it to be too dark. We want it to be whitish or off-white fur. We're going back to Ulthuan Grey now. And the first thing to do is to pick out the area around the mouth and the nose. So we've just thinned the Ulthuan Grey down. We're going to put that in and then sort of feather it out and um, blend it into the fur around. Just have to be a little bit careful with this. But it doesn't matter too much because again it's sort of a natural fur look. And then we're just going to dry brush the most raised areas of the fur. Just being very careful not to get it over the armour because at this stage the armour is finished. Now I am mixing Ulthuan Grey with Nuln Oil. It's just a little bit of Nuln Oil and um, quite a bit of water and then some Ulthuan Grey to get a sort of very runny, light grey coloration. And what I'm doing here is I'm just going to paint in little triangles of light grey uh, in a somewhat haphazard fashion. If you want to, you can look on the internet for source images of white tigers and the patterns on their fur. But, um, you know, I like my mate, but not that much so I didn't bother so um, I'm just doing sort of whatever looks good I'm just eyeballing it really and then once that's done we're going to do the same thing again but just with null oil this time and we're going to paint little triangles in and lines and we're going to put them between the light grey ones but also slightly over the light grey ones and between them building up different colours and different hues in that fur you just need to be careful not to really go too overboard with this because um, you don't want to lose that whiteness of the fur underneath. And that's actually the fur done. So we're going to move on to the eyes. We're going to use Moot Green for this because Moot Green is a really great bright green colour which I think is really nice for cat eyes. And just being very careful using a small brush we're going to line in the green on each eye. And then I'm going to use Abaddon Black just to put a small line in each of the eyes for the pupil. Again, just being careful not to go over any of the surrounding fur, trying to keep your hand as steady as possible. 
And uh, we're nearly there. We're going to put some Mechanica Standard Grey on that molded bit of textured base element that comes on the miniature. And then we're going to wash that with Nile Oil to bring out the details. Making sure we don't get it over the feet. And then we're going to use Sterling Mud, which is a textured technical paint. And we're going to put Sterling Mud all the way around the base, sort of building it up towards the stone textured element that's already on the miniature. And then when that's done, we'll put a little bit of Agrax over that Sterling Mud. We'll put some Abaddon Black around the rim of the base. And then we will varnish the miniature, um, making sure we use an anti-shine varnish so he's not all shiny. And that's what we've got. The last thing that um, I'm not showing in this video is I put a little bit of um, leaf scatter and a tiny little bit of patchy grass on the base just to add a little bit more interest to that. But other than that, that is done and I'm relatively happy with how it turned out. I'm not sure the fur is quite as glorious as my friend possibly imagined his tabaxi would look, but um, it's probably the best that I can do with my particular painting skills. Um, so that is it from me for now. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you've enjoyed it, please consider pressing the like button. If you've really enjoyed it, please consider subscribing if you already do so. And hopefully I'll see you all again very soon. Bye-bye everyone. Bye-bye.